died. 28 years old is just about as old as they got. They got to around 30 years old. We can actually tell that by sawing a bone open, you can actually read their age just like you can a tree. They do have rings. They actually have thicker rings to tell when their growth spurts were. The T-Rex had growth spurts from 16 to 20 years old when they, they had the real big spurt, which is weird, so it's closer towards the third end of their life. So, the T-Rex, the Sue was 28 years old. If she was really old, she had to have some problems with her. She was getting old, there's no vet hospital she could have gone to if she was ever injured. So, a couple things going on with Sue right here. She is missing a couple of teeth that haven't been drawn back yet. These three big lumps on the ribs, those are not bad glue jobs from the people that put this together. Those three clumps right there are calcified bone that have been, been re-solidified and healed on its own. So those are self-healing ribs. So right here also, you notice how smooth this bone is right here. This is really, really, really rough. Really rough kind of jagged edges. This is most likely a broken bone. And right up here, the most interesting part about it, look how rough and jagged. I'm gonna go ahead and lit up for me as soon as I put it up there. I didn't plan that. So all these jagged edges on top of the vertebrae versus all the smooth edges on the bottom. The jagged edges, Sue had arthritis when she died. Kind of interesting. So Sue had arthritis, she had broken ribs, she had these little things on her jaw. So when they found, first found Sue in 1990 when she was dug up in the northern, northwestern part of South, South Dakota, they thought these or a year were teeth marks. You'd think they're okay, they're teeth marks. She was probably killed, probably how she died. These are actually parasitic holes. These are holes from parasites. The same exact parasitic holes that we're finding in bird species today. So the very same thing that we used to find in the T-Rex are the same things that are going on right now. That is your first of many connections to birds I'm gonna tell you about today with T-Rex. So, for this T-Rex, I'm gonna get into that. My favorite part about T-Rex is how closely related to birds it really is. So, T-Rex, first one, being these parasitic holes that are attacking birds right now. Second thing, you have two legs. So, fact number two, two legs. T-Rex is a bipedal theropod, so they are just like birds who can also walk and hop around on two legs. Fun myth, the T-Rex couldn't hop around, it also could not run, like you see in the Jurassic Park disease. To run, the T-Rex needs to have, the term running needs both feet off the ground at one point or another. The T-Rex weighing 18,000 pounds was not going to lift itself off the ground for anything. So, not to chase a jeep through Jurassic Park, not to do anything else. So, the T-Rex could not run, it could power walk, could power walk up to 20 miles an hour. Because of how big their legs are and how long of a stride they had, they could actually reach up to 20 miles an hour just walking. So that's fact number two, just like birds. They had two legs, they walked on their back feet. Fact number three is these bones right here, if I were to take and just saw these bones in half, the Tyrannosaurus rex has hollow bones, just like birds, go figure. So the T-Rex has hollow bones. Well, how does it have hollow bones being this big, have to support that much weight? Actually, it's up to six inches thick at some point. So you can think of a six inch donut to get my mouth watering. A six inch donut has, that's really, really thick. That's all compact bone. So they actually do have a hollow part of their bone. Why? Because of evolutionarily, they're getting ready to fly. Just like, just like birds have hollow bones. They need to be lighter to, to fly. This hole in the skull, I don't know if some of you guys heard me say that, that's another way of lightening up the skull. What other animals have a hole that goes straight through their head? Vultures. Some vultures have holes that go through their head because they get so big, they need to lighten up the skull a little bit to be able to not be weighed down when they're trying to flap. You know, they need to lighten up a little bit. So, that's another bird fact. The next one, this I thought was really interesting, and we, this isn't a confirmed scientific fact yet, but the T-Rex has a big flat plate right here, part of the pelvis. So, the T-Rex, this is proven, did not sleep laying down. They slept sitting up and standing. They spotted like a bird, like a chicken, would also do the same thing to incubate its own eggs. So the T-Rex actually would incubate its own eggs, just like a bird would. It has this thing, it's almost like a little stool or a little built-in chair that they have for themselves. It's pretty fascinating. So, they have that. This right here, this curved spine. Any monitor lizard, tegu lizard, any other reptile that you see right now besides a snake sitting in the right position has a curved spine. Or does not have a curved spine, they have a straight spine. So what does have a curved spine? What else sits there like this? Ducks, geese, swans, cranes, ostrich, emus. All birds have this curved spine. 
They also have that because if the Tyrannosaurus Rex were to sit down like it has the ability to, to cover over its eggs, and he had a straightforward head, he would have to sit there like this forever. It's not going to do that. It needs that curved spine to be able to sit and look straight forward to really see what's going on around it. So, the last fact about Tyrannosaurus Rex, I mean, it's just like her, this is by far my favorite fact. I'll try not to get in your way to the cameras. Um, okay, so everybody here has had turkey at some point. Everybody here has broken a wishbone at some point. So, the wishbone is the bird of, it's really the bone of flight for most, most avian species. So, just about every bird has it, really only birds have the wishbone. So, the wishbone is connected from the shoulder blades to the scapulas right here, and then it connects in the middle. Notice, we have a connecting the bone right here. The Tyrannosaurus rex has a wishbone. Tyrannosaurus rex has a bird's bone of flight, the wishbone. So, to connect that into another thing that's very similar to that, look at these hands. Why is Sue walking like this? Why is she walking like this? Because they never walked like this, like we all thought they did. Like Jurassic Park, everybody made it look like. These hands are completely useless compared to the rest of the body. These hands cannot reach the teeth. They cannot clean their teeth out like we all thought they could. They clearly can't do push-ups or make a bed, but they also cannot actually reach their, their teeth like everybody thought they did. So what are the hands actually used for? No idea, but if you go over to this little station right here, try and get the light on it, it says maybe Sue played the accordion. It's a really neat station. They have two little levers you can actually reach down and feel the range of motion for the T-Rex. Her hands, the way these are perfectly fused, it really wasn't until Sue was discovered in 1990 that their hands, they did not have rotating wrists. The Sue Tyrannosaurus Rex and all other T-Rexes could not rotate their hands, therefore they could not do anything except possibly shovel things up. Were they actually reaching down and grabbing branches to make a nest? Since they clearly now they incubate their own eggs. So the hands were useless, but also since they can't really rotate, how are they going to move their hands around like this? What else does this? Bird. That's your closest, closest part to being a bird is the range of motion in the arms and having that wishbone. It's, it's incredible, it's almost scary how close the birds they actually are. So I've gone over the head. Just briefly before, I'll kind of mention it again. There's a whole bunch of different holes in the head, and we're all trying to figure out what they are. This, like I said earlier, is kind of the weight balance for the bird, for the dinosaur, to just like birds have it to make their skull look lighter. These are not ear holes. These are muscle holes. This is where the muscles would really go to connect from the top of the jaw to the bottom of the jaw. Now, to kind of sidetrack here, this skull. And in fact, the entire skeleton is not the real zoo skeleton. The real zoo skeleton is in Chicago. And in fact, the real zoo skull is not connected to the real zoo rest of the body it's in Chicago. It's actually on a different floor. Why? Because it's so darn heavy. So this cast right here, this skull alone, made of much lighter material than the actual bone. Does anybody want to guess how much it weighs? The, the fake. The actual fake made of cast made of a different material, not actual bone. How much? Ten pounds. A lot more than ten pounds. Yeah, <laughs> we made a styrofoam and probably weigh more than ten pounds. Anybody have any other guesses? Yeah. Two tons. Two tons. No, this is the, the fake material. The fake material is actually weighs six hundred pounds. Six hundred pounds. This is just the the lighter material to actually so be supported by the skeleton. So with this skeleton, there's no way that it can support anything really heavier. Let me want to guess how much the real skull weighs. Thousand pounds. Fifty-five more. Fifty-five. Fifty-five thousand. You're actually somewhat close to most people guess. The real skull in Chicago that is on a separate floor that cannot be supported without the musculature of the actual T-Rex weighs three thousand two hundred pounds for just the skull alone, let alone all the muscles, about the tongue, and everything else, all the skin. So the T-Rex actually, the skull alone weighs 3,200 pounds, the entire body 18,000 pounds. So the, really the best part about the Sioux exhibit, I'll tell you the last part about it, is to the tip. Well, why would this be so significant? Well, it's actually not real, but this is the closest we've gotten to the entire tail of the T-Rex. In all 46 to 48 um, T-Rexes that have been unearthed, only 12 of them were more than 50% complete. Sue looks pretty darn complete right here. Sue is actually 90% complete. 
from what we found in different pieces. She is the most complete skeleton they've ever found. She's 28 years old. She is the biggest T-Rex they've ever found. And this tail, which I think is really neat, is all made up. That's what well, we have as scientists. I'm not going to classify myself as a scientist. Tag still says volunteer. Um, the, uh, the, the tip of the tail right there is actually all made up, given that that's about what we think it might look like. If you look right here, that really big clump right there, everything after that is made up. That clump, just like I showed in the rib, is calcified, re solidified tissue, bone tissue. So the tail was probably bitten off, it was probably attacked by something, it could have been, could have just fallen off at some point. Or since it gets so small, it could have been the first stuff to deteriorate, and we just haven't found it since it's been 65 million years since she was, she was alive. That's the first part that's going to go. So, given that, if anybody's got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Please fire away. Yes? Those holes in the lower jaw, what are they? Yes, these are actually parasitic holes from parasites. So these, these holes, as some of you out there know, uh, sensory nerves, these are actually from parasites, the same parasites we find in birds right now. That would hurt. That, that hurt, yeah. She was, she was not in, in, the, in the best of shape. She had parasitic holes eating through her skull. She had three broken ribs. She had arthritis. She had gout. She had a lot of, a lot of issues. She was 28 years out of the average 30-year lifespan, so she was right towards the end, given what we know. Everything that we know is just what we found. It's not everything that could actually be there. Yes? How do they preserve? It's, there's a whole science to it. The actual preservation of the bones, the, the calcium solidifies, and there's a whole lot more to it that I personally don't know. But it's definitely something you can look up. It's, um, the bones are preserved after being alarmed for so long. Yes? Is it a male or a female? Is it what? It's a boy or girl. Is it a boy or girl? Actually, that's a great question. Sue! may not be a girl. I'm gonna, I just probably ruined a lot of your days. Yeah, Sue might not be a girl. Sue is, is an unknown gender. If you look right here, this is, this is where the, the exit would be. The butt would be right in there. Um, for a reptile species, just looking at the skeletal reptile, even right now, there's actually no definitive male or female looking at just the skeleton. You need to see the musculature around it. You need to see the thickening at the base of the tail. Some reptiles right now, they have a really big fat jowls and they store much of their fat in their, in their jaws. That's really the best way to tell males and females with some reptiles right now. Besides just looking at some femoral pores on the inside of the legs or even some, some bulges towards the base of the tail. So, Sue might be a boy. It'd be a real bummer if you ever found out that we call him Sue this whole time. But Sue is the name of the person that actually discovered so, Yes. What we do with the T-Rex is we had other ones that somebody had found that looked just like it and also made the T-Rex. You guys are getting a bunch of stuff like that. What is that piece of the rib on top? Oh, this one. Oh, Which one? This one right here? Could have been a birth defect. It could have been from when they were buried, and they could have had a heavy rock that could have fallen on it. All of these and all these bones up here. This is not exactly how it would have looked in the body. A lot of things happen to it when it's being preserved. With the uh, fracture, yes. is it a non-weaker? Yes. Like yes. But it's also it's not certain that it's, it was actually fractured. They don't have a definitive crack. They've gone through x rays and they, there's not an actual crack there, but it, it appears to have been some kind of, of damage at some point, maybe a bruising of the bone that sent for. There's, a, there's sometimes, I actually have it. Um, a, lot of people, a lot of people have it in their knees where, where their tendon meets their bone. If, if, if it's ever damaged, it re regrows bone instead of. Yeah. You know exactly what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that a, was that a non weight bearing bone? Just like we have? Not quite sure, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I would make something up. I'm not 100 percent certain, but it could have been. Any other questions? Yes. But butt didn't look like real people butt. <laughs> no, it doesn't at all, no. But if you if you look at our butts, our skeletons, you know what? We have a tailbone. We have part of that back there. We don't use it. T-Rex has arms, he doesn't use it. Sometimes evolutionarily, we, we have a tail. Before we're born, we have a tail. You know that? People start out with a tail. Man, 
blew your mind. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Is it to scale? Yes, this is exactly to scale. This is a 58-foot Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton. And this, is the, this is the largest? That this they is found? the largest they've ever found. Yes. Because they seem to be described. Large. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just exaggerated? Yep, it is. It's exactly. Yeah, that was my first question when I was asking to make sure I knew what I was talking about up here. Yes, yeah, so the T-Rex is very, very exaggerated in the movies, and it is not as big as they did. A T-Rex can't bite you right now, throw his head up, and drop you down his throat, just like that. They, their throats aren't that wide. They actually could eat a human if humans were around 65 million years ago, but it's not as easy as they make it look like in the movies. They just weren't that big. This is big, but they weren't that big. Yes? Um, if they're so big, how would they bend over all the way to the ground and eat their prey? That's a very good question. This bone right here, this part of that, and their tail. So their, their pelvis works as kind of like if, if they need to kind of sit down where they lean forward, just like they can actually sit to incubate their own eggs, just like birds. That works as almost a balance in their tail. The T-Rex, the just like most reptile species right now, store a lot of their weight and their muscle and their fat in the base of their tail, helps create a balance. This head weighs so much, if he leans too far forward, bang, he's gonna hit the ground. So he needs that really, really heavy tail to kind of balance him. There's actually another, this place is full of awesome exhibits. There's another piece right over there where you can actually see if the T-Rex starts to tip over, swinging the tail brings the whole body back. They, they replicate it so well over there. You gotta check, definitely check it out. So, any other questions for me? Yes? Uh, is it true that T-Rexes, um, there was one T-Rex and then there were like three other different types? Like smaller versions of That's a great question. Actually, a scientist actually just proved that wrong, believe it or not. Um, so I'm glad you asked that. There's actually a bunch of smaller versions of the T Rex that were named different species. And until one scientist finally went around and collected them all, cut the bones open. It's no, no museum wants their actual bones being cut open. So one scientist went out there, bought a whole bunch of them, cut the legs open, and found out that just like in species that we see now in people and in, in reptiles, the younger species have spongy bones, so there's, the bones aren't really that hard. Just like a, a turtle, when a baby turtle's got a really soft shell, their, heart, their shell is not that hard yet. So, the T-Rex has spongy bone on the inside, looks just like a sponge. When they get older, the bone gets harder, more solid, more harder to break. So they get more solid bones. So some of those smaller dinosaur species that they had, they realized were just baby Tyrannosaurus rex. So they actually had to make a, species go extinct again. <laughs> Think about it. Great question. Excellent question. Anybody else? Yeah, so did they hunt with their babies or no? That's, it. That's another awesome question. You should come on stage. Um, <laughs> please don't get paid. But uh, the, the T-Rex actually, Sue, another big, big find with Sue, she was found with another adult T-Rex and a juvenile. So they found Sue in what appeared to be a family unit. And at 28 years of age, at the end of her life, she was still in a family unit. It's just really, really wild. It could have been a super coincidence that they found another one and a juvenile right next to it at the time of her death, but it's, it's really fascinating that they could have actually hunted as a family unit or in a pack, and it could have just been a smaller one. They don't have that evidence to really connect them. So, excellent question. I hope we have another one. I feel a great question. Any more? All right, that's the thing. Come, come back to me if you do. If not, there's going to be another speaker here shortly. So thank you guys. If you have any questions, definitely check with the next speaker. Thank you.